The main reason has to do with using steroids and other drugs that promote cardiovascular complications on top of their predisposing genetic factors. But most people aren't taking steroids and they don't have that much muscle mass either. So how does muscle affect your longevity if you're like a regular person? So the average person tends to have this uh, negative association with muscle mass uh, because uh, bodybuilders who use anabolic steroids, they get heart disease and they just die prematurely. Most average people, they're never going to take steroids and uh, they also don't have that much muscle. In fact, having too little muscle mass can also be actually very detrimental to your health and longevity. There are a lot of studies that find how low muscle mass is a risk factor for many age-related diseases such as metabolic syndrome, osteoporosis, obesity, neurodegeneration and heart disease. Even just an increase in muscle mass has been shown to have a protective effect on developing metabolic syndrome independent of baseline skeletal muscle. In older subjects, lean tissue is strongly associated with survival and negatively associated with mortality. A 2016 paper found that amongst a large cohort of 65 and older, mortality rates were significantly lower in individuals who did regular strength training. Low muscular fitness combined with inadequate nutrition is a major risk factor for disease and mortality from all causes. Grip strength is a simple and inexpensive measure of overall muscular strength. Low grip strength is associated with all-cause mortality, cardiovascular events, myocardial infarction and stroke. Aging after the age of 30 is characterized by a progressive decrease in skeletal muscle and strength, which is a process called sarcopenia. From the age of 40, you can lose up to 1% of muscle and strength per year. That's quite significant, and by your 70s, you will have lost the vast majority of your muscle tissue, which is a huge problem for general health and independence. 48% body fat. All the people are at a higher risk of bone fractures because of low muscle mass and low bone mineral density. After the injury occurs, they're forced to become sedentary, and as a result of that, their entire health goes into a downfall, leading to things like weight gain, hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia, because they're not moving anymore. In patients of hip fracture, those with a higher muscle mass have a faster recovery time, they get discharged home more often, and they have a higher one-year survival rate compared to those with low muscle mass. Muscle weakness has been seen to account for up to 15% of premature deaths in women and 23% in men, even 11 years after a fracture. Low muscle mass independent of obesity also increases the risk of diabetes and metabolic syndrome because it helps with insulin sensitivity and glucose tolerance. With more muscle, your resting metabolic rate would be higher and thus it's easier for you to lose weight and prevent insulin resistance. Diabetes. The problem is that the ability to build muscle also goes down with age. That's because of a natural drop in anabolic hormones like testosterone and becoming more sedentary. Rates of sarcopenia are similar to declines in growth hormone as well. Fortunately, it's been shown that both young and old people can still activate muscle protein synthesis with resistance training. Even a single bout of resistance training can increase muscle protein synthesis by two to three times, which may be enhanced further with a protein-rich diet. Muscle mass has a beneficial effect on longevity and life expectancy, which might help with living longer. However, even if it didn't increase your lifespan, it will still be worth it by extending your health span or the quality of your life. This process is called squaring the curve, where you basically stay young and functionally independent all the way until your late years, and then you die off rapidly. <coughs> the alternative is how most average people age. They start a slow decline in the 30s and 40s already and are basically suffering for decades under different medications and drugs that keep them alive. I don't know about you, but I would much rather stay fit and mobile for as long as possible even if it would mean a slightly shorter life. But regardless, more muscle mass and strength are still going to increase your life expectancy. So how much muscle is too much and uh, how much muscle is just enough for health and longevity? Low muscle mass is generally characterized by this uh, skinny fat physique. Uh, little to no muscle, low bone density, frailty, muscle weakness and uh, these are all indicators of uh, low muscle mass and low strength. This is what you don't really want to be in because of low muscle it's going to increase your risk of osteoporosis, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, sarcopenic obesity and cachexia. Too much muscle mass is uh, unachievable for the average person who doesn't take anabolic steroids. Only bodybuilders are capable of reaching levels of muscle mass at which it begins to increase the risk of heart disease and cancer. Unless you become obese, like you know, a fat powerlifter <laughs> while trying to build muscle, then you don't really have to uh, worry about it because you know, uh, generally having a leaner physique when you're natural and having a bit more muscle mass is generally going to have a positive effect on your longevity, at least in terms of preventing osteoporosis, preventing metabolic syndrome, preventing neurodegeneration, and preventing insulin resistance. 
What you do need to pay attention to is uh, still your overall blood work and uh, other areas of your life, uh, such as sleep and uh, you know general health. Primarily like high blood sugar, high high triglycerides, high cholesterol, and uh, that sort of thing. High inflammation, those things, the high blood pressure, they can still increase your risk of dying prematurely, despite you having more muscle. Disappoint! The optimal amount of muscle is like a very wide spectrum that comprises the majority of the bell curve. You don't need a, like a whole lot of muscle to be in the zone where you're helping with longevity, but you don't definitely want to be under muscled. You want to have, you know, at least some functional strength and you want to be able to, you know, do a bunch of pull-ups, uh, move your body around, do all the main lifts uh, with ease and be relatively fit in uh, all those resistance type uh, exercises where you're stimulating muscle growth. You can assess your muscle mass and body composition with body imaging techniques like an MRI, CT scan or a DEXA scan. Assessing muscle strength is easily done with a grip strength test or by looking at your overall strength in the major lifts like squat, bench and deadlift. Gait speed has been also been used to assess leg strength and predict future disability. So all the research indicates that having a bit more muscle tends to be better for slowing down age or diseases and increasing life expectancy. You shouldn't wait until you're in your 60s uh, to start doing strength training because at that point you're already at a huge disadvantage and uh, it's going to be much harder for you to build muscle.